Today we're in the kitchen and we're going to do a really fun and easy project. We're going to tile the backsplash. I've got three different colors of tile and I could just use the solid pieces and design a pattern, but we want to have a more contemporary look for this kitchen. So to do that, we're going to be installing a broken tiled backsplash and it's really easy to do. And that's how you break up the tile. You could also put your tile in plastic bags and break it up that way, but either way the bags or the carpet will keep your tile from flying everywhere. Now you can see that we have a lot of different sizes and shapes, and this is really going to help the backsplash look nice. Before you put your broken pieces on, you want to start with border tiles, and you can buy the borders at the same time that you do your regular tile. Now the reason that you want to put a border on is because you can see this has a rounded finished edge called a bull-nosed edge. So when you put this up there around your border, it's going to look really nice. If you just used your broken pieces for the border, you'd see the unfinished edge, and that's not going to look quite as nice as the border will. Now since our backsplash is gray, we chose black to really highlight and accent this area. But remember, the tiles and the borders will come in any color that you want. To put all of your pieces on, you need to use some mastic. And I've got a notched applicator that I'm using. I'm also using the eighth of an inch side to give me the right amount of thickness to hold all of the tiles in place. You don't want to do the whole area just yet. All you want to do is just put some mastic on the, around the border that you'll be placing the tiles. I'm going to start with this corner piece, and as you can see, it has a finished edge on both sides. So this piece goes right there, and then I'm just going to work my way down. Now it's not going to be necessary to run this border all the way to the wall, since the cabinet's going to cover it up. I'm going to stop right here, and I'm leaving about an eighth of an inch gap in between, so I'll have space for a grout line. Put another piece here. Just put the border in each small space that you're working on. Now the reason that you want to work in a small area is because remember you're adding mastic for your tiles. And if you spread the mastic over a larger area, especially since you're using smaller pieces of tile, the mastic would dry out before you'd have time to get all of the tile installed. Alright, now I have all of the tile broken up and separated by color. Now comes the fun part, putting these on. And because these aren't all the same shape, this is where you can create any kind of look or pattern that you're after. So I'm just using my three colors. I'll do kind of a squiggly effect, I think. When you're putting your tiles up, here's something that I need to warn you about. Because these are broken pieces, you might have some sharp edges or jagged edges. All you need to do to solve that problem is take a piece of sandpaper and just smooth that down. There, that feels a lot better. That way, once you get this all put up and grouted in, you won't have any jagged or sharp edges exposed and you won't take a chance of ever cutting your hand when you're cleaning the backsplash. Now here's just a small problem that you might run into. You might have a small gap and you don't have any other tiles to fit in there. You can use a pair of nippers just to cut your tile. Alright, now that fits in there nicely. I've added some border right here around this window just to set off our pattern a little bit more. Now let me show you this. If you have a switch or an electrical outlet, what you want to do is pull your plate out just a little bit so you can slide your tiles up underneath there. That way when you put the cover back on, it'll sit flush with your tile. Well, I'm almost finished. I just have this small area left to do. Now this is a pretty time-consuming project, but that's only because you're working with such small pieces. However, it's a very simple project that you can do yourself. As soon as I get through with this area, what we need to do is let this set up for at least 24 hours for the mastic to dry. Then we can come back in and grout this, put our plates back on, and we'll be finished. We've let the mastic set up for 24 hours, and now we're ready to grout this in. You can choose almost any color of grout that you want. For our project, we've chosen a darker gray. Now what you want to do is use a grout float to put this on with. I'll just get you a big dab. Go ahead and smear this all the way over your tiles like this. And what this is doing simply is just filling in the gaps between your tiles. When you get down here to the bottom of the cabinet, you definitely need to get this in the cracks below as well. But you'll want to clean up your cabinet pretty quickly so that it doesn't stain or damage your cabinet. 
a good idea to go ahead and turn your breakers off and just be careful when you're putting the grout around this area not to get any grout into your sockets or your light switches. You need to let the grout dry for about 15 minutes before you wipe it off and the tiles clean up really easy. Just take a wet sponge and wipe over your tiles just like this. And what you want to do is keep rinsing out your sponge as you go. When you clean off your tiles, you can see how nicely your pattern shows up and also how well your grout lines are filled in. All right, this is our last switch plate and we're finished. We spent right about $70 for this project, but you could spend more or less depending on the size of your project and also the tiles that you choose. But you can see that we've really added some color to this otherwise dull gray backsplash. If you would like more information on this project or others, contact us on the internet at michaelholligan.com.